director and unesco representative for india bhutan nepal maldives sri lanka who is always supportive of all the programs and given a, a lot of guidance and support in in, in running this program in india a uh, welcome mr arik and thank you very much for your gracious presence thank you very much ramesh welcome yeah uh the program is uh, this today's webinar is being chaired by our member secretary dr sachidanand joshi who is always a support behind uh, activities at ignc thank you sir for agreeing to chair and welcome you to the webinar we have a very esteemed panel to speak in today's uh, webinar uh, we have with us none other than uh, mr faction banda who is chief of documentary heritage unit uh, unesco memory of the world program uh, communication and information unesco headquarter basically he is responsible for implementation monitoring of this memory of the world program in in, in, in all over the world so thank you uh, mr bara and it's an honor to welcome you in this webinar uh, we also have very uh, esteemed uh, panelist speaker uh, ms rachel oscar uh, she is the chair of uk national committee and unesco memory of the world program and also uh, she is uh, working uh, in uh, uh, edinburgh in, uh, university of edinburgh in uk uh, thank you rachel for your gracious presence and uh, devoting uh, giving time us for this particular webinar we are honored to have you here we have the people who are administering and managing this unesco memory of the world program uh, in different capacity we have very dynamic uh, person joint secretary uh, ministry of culture government of india ms nirupama kotu who is always supportive and very very encouraging of uh, uh, support in in this program whenever we want any support and guidance she is always there so thank you ms nirupama kotu for your gracious presence as the observer in this webinar as you all know uh, uh, unesco uh, national commission for cooperation with, uh, indian national commission for cooperation with unesco is uh, under the ministry of hrd who is going to be ministry of education now and uh, ms nita prasad a joint secretary look after that program in ministry of hrd so we welcome you ms prasad and thanks for your time and gracious presence we have with us uh, mr ezekiel dlamani advisor information and communication unesco new delhi office who is uh, who is very closely working with ignc and uh, personally uh, in 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 my capacity as a national coordinator for expert group of unesco memory of the world program and always have support and guidance uh, so thank you mr ezekiel for all support and being present today as a observer thank you very much uh, this, yeah thank you uh, beside this panel we have a, 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 a invited guest uh, as a observer uh, Dr. Vyuthi Wong, so she is the uh, the deputy uh, head of the program uh, of Asia Pacific Memory of the World Program National uh, Regional Committee. So thank you, Vyu, and uh, very uh, I'm I'm glad you are here with us as a special invitee. Thank you very so, much. Thank you. Yeah. With these uh, uh, special guests and uh, esteemed panel and observer. let let me begin the the today's webinar by giving certain kind of my thoughts and ideas regarding how where we are in in india and now what are the challenges and issues which we need to take care of. so i would like to uh, put uh, these things in, in in front of all of you for further discussion and your guidance and support i have been associated with this uh, uh, cultural heritage uh, when i joined the ignc in 2004 and till 2011 uh, i i i engaged in digitization of 300000 manuscript more than 1000 visuals and uh, other collections and uh, during that period i also engaged myself with the various academic divisions so uh, kala kosh and the uh, national mission for the manuscripts and uh, from 2011 to 2018 i was in jnu uh, on jaipatation and now after coming back uh, uh, i have been uh, appointed as a member of international advisory committee of UNESCO Memory of the World program in 2018, and also uh, a expert group was constituted by UNESCO New Delhi office in 2017, and I am the national coordinator for that group. I am also uh, engaged in some other uh, cultural heritage uh, programs, like member of International Consultative Committee of Digital Dunam China from 2014 to 2019. I was also a member of uh, 
a committee expert group uh, setting up of international center for documentary heritage in south korea uh, 2018 and 19 uh, i am also been uh, the member of expert member of ifla international advisory committee uh, for cultural heritage uh, which ifla is the international body and and i also represent in various uh, regional committees besides that i have been uh, associated with various uh, other countries in various digital archiving program of uh, different uh, uh, regions. So when we talk about document uh, culture heritage, uh, just uh, to understand the various program of UNESCO, uh, we have four categories of cultural heritage, uh, documentary heritage, intangible cultural heritage, tangible cultural heritage, uh, and natural heritage. And here we are, we are more concerned about document heritage because this program is to management of documentary heritage, books, newspapers, manuscripts, media, photographs, film, uh, all, all kind of born digital material, which is housed in libraries, museums, galleries, and archives, and some private collection. UNESCO is having different types of program uh, to identify, to safeguard, to preserve, and provide access, and, and also to give recognition to various, various cultural heritage, uh, global cultural heritage. There is a program on intangible cultural heritage list. There is a program on world heritage list. and. Uh, Definitely, the, the the program which we are we are concerned today, UNESCO Memory of the World program, which was basically launched in 1992 to safeguard the documentary heritage of humanity, our recorded memories, and that's why it was given a name Memory of the World, and why it was required. So basically, there are there is a there are various kind of situations uh, like war and social upheaval, as well as severe lack of resources, have really worsened our. Uh, century old uh, documentary heritage and uh, various kind of collections uh, uh, are in the danger uh, because of various kind of cases of looting and dispersal, illegal trading, destruction, inadequate housing and funding. So all these reasons led to a kind of uh, program with the vision uh, that human documentary heritage belongs to the humanities, to the all, and it should be fully preserved and protected with due recognition of culture, modes, and practice, practicality. So, so basically, we can, we can have over, uh, global access to this uh, uh, world heritage. And uh, objectives of these programs are very clear, to facilitate preservation by the most appropriate techniques of the world, documentary heritage, to assist universal access to documentary heritage, to increase awareness worldwide of the existing and significance of documentary heritage, so basically, uh, this, this program operates uh, at three levels, international register, regional register, and uh, national registers. And regional register is taken care by uh, regional committees. Uh, currently, there are three important committees in operational, but some may be uh, uh, in the pipeline. So there, this program has various activities. I think uh, Mr. Uh, Banda will talk more about that. I will not uh, focus more on that. So in this, uh, uh, various kind of registers. Uh, there is a process, inscription process, uh, where uh, you can submit. Uh, any country can submit two nominations to international register and to, to regional register, and there is no limitation on joint nominations and national registers. So currently, this uh, program is under comprehensive review. Uh, uh, Mr. Fraction will more talk about is that. So the selection of heritage is based on certain criteria: its rarity, integrity, threat and uh, having some certain kind of management plan to basically archive it. Uh, if you talk about international register, so far, uh, which was operationalized in 97, we have 194 entries, 12 from uh, 8 African countries, C from 3 urban countries, 42 from 17 Asia and specific countries, 97 from 30 European and North American countries, 34 from 21 Latin American and Caribbean countries, and three from independent organizations. India has nine submissions so far in this international register. So when we talk about implementation of this program in South Asia, I just want to give you brief glimpses how we are placed in South Asia. Uh, there are in international register, there are nine entries from India, two from Nepal, one from Pakistan, and two from Sri Lanka. There are no entry from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Bhutan, and Maldives. When we talk about the national committees in place, except Sri Lanka, no South Asian countries having national committee for uh, memory of the world program. When we talk about submission to regional register, uh, not a single country from South Asia has submitted any 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 document in the uh, regional committee. 
when we talk about creation of national register none of the south asian country has created national register so far so what what is the lead, needed at action uh, at regional level basically when we talk about south asia it is very rich heritage we have lot of shared common heritage we have shared cultural tradition we have shared languages so it is important to safeguard in developing a disaster risk reduction policy and program so i i believe that uh, we should have a regional sub committee uh, for this uh, region to to look after because there there are so many commonalities and and in requirement in this direction unesco new, new, new delhi office in the uh, beginning we have a brainstorming session a workshop on preservation of documentary heritage for disaster risk reduction which was organized in uh, bhutan in uh, november 2018 now uh, when we talk about the status in india how unesco memory of the world program is uh, being done in india in august 2014 agency was designated as a uh, nodal uh, agency to look after this program to create public awareness and publicity to organize training time on preparation of dossier and other issues uh, but so far uh, there was no budget allocation no proper uh, structure in place so that's why some activities have been started but other scenario uh, we don't have a national committee we have not created a national register this uh, 2017 unesco office created a national expert group on memory of the world program uh, which i mentioned that uh, there are six members and i am the national coordinator for that so basically what we need to do we need to develop a mechanism for nomination to international register regional register and national register and that mechanism help in identification of uh, submission and uh, preparing it is those years more than most importantly there is hardly any awareness about this program in the people so there are number of activities required to create a mechanism and procedure for this inscriptions and also uh, for that we need a national committee that because that committee is is a basically operational link with uh, with with the unesco uh, national commission ministry of culture as an international committee uh, Uh, with the international register and national register uh, regional register so national committee is something very very important when we think of creating a national register because it has very very defined role in the unesco uh, 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 memory of the world program document this, this 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 committee will have the responsibility for the overall management and monitoring of the program in india and will establish and maintain the uh, the register uh, uh, to to encourage receive and assess the nominations of documentary heritage for inclusion in it with will coordinate and propose nomination from india to be the international memory world of the register but also verify the joint nomination we will work in close cooperation with government and non government organization in india in developing the national register and contributing to the international register to raise awareness of the promote and memory of the world program in india it will encourage and see government and private sector sponsorship for the specific memory of the world programs and activities in india it will work in close cooperation with the new national commission and ministry of culture uh, to to have better coordination with iac and regional committees so th that's why this is this is important to have a national committee and then second important task is to create national register india possesses a vast documentary heritage an international regional register can have only two nomination in each cycle so how to recognize or uh, create a safeguard our own heritage so basically uh, currently we lack awareness about this program and uh, we also not have very good trained manpower in dealing with the issues of safeguarding preservation and in another thing so we need a policy also in this regard we need a good digital archiving system and this preservation policy to deal with and also a collaborative efforts it's a kind of consortium to deal with preservation in conservation of cultural heritage which is currently lacking so uh, what is the future action plan uh, i propose uh, uh, in this webinar setting up of indian memory of the world national committee creation of national register on unesco memory program in india creation of awareness and training on about unesco memory of the world program strengthening and developing in mechanisms for submission Uh, for uh, international regional register creation of disaster risk reduction plan to safeguard documentary heritage india lacks this policy and program every time there is a flood there is a uh, there are different kind of natural disaster in in la last two last year in kerala we lost so many libraries in the flood but we don't have any disaster research related risk reduction related to libraries archives and safeguarding those documentary heritage and we also need to set up a national level digital preservation program which can 
like in current uh, pandemic situation if we have that kind of access the people who are under closed down could have easily access the resources which is not breaking uh, so agency has taken some program yes such certain kind of joint nominations uh, have been explored uh, uh, and some workshop was organized uh, any project uh, in collaboration with unesco has been started so they have they have submitted some responses to the joint nomination like turkish national commission asked for some report and we compiled this uh, catalog of molana's book in india and this catalog was well appreciated by uh, at least because this is a shared heritage in seven to eight countries and we submitted this complete uh, information there and uh, also we have some proposal from iran and some other countries recently we have received a proposal from indonesia uh, for uh, having a joint nomination for first dam summit held in 1961 so apart from that this project which we we, we undertaken in, in 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 last year and uh, the data collection work has been done uh, thanks to unesco new delhi office for providing financial support for this project and uh, basically under this project we have also tried to create an awareness about the program we have also collected the data uh, and uh, some photographs of various archives we we aim to collect the data from 500 archives and and uh, uh, unfortunately uh, uh, we we are not able to get although we designed questionnaire online offline we have also personal visit to these libraries but uh, uh, we were able to get only data from 80 uh, uh, 90 90 uh, archives so far and most of these archives are not having sufficient infrastructure technology the, 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 this this data is very eye opener and uh, it, it clearly reflect the state of our archives in india and many of them are not giving data because they are in not a position they don't have staff or it is it is being closed down so basically what are the deliverable of this project we are coming out with a directory of archives in india which will be uploaded on the website also we are also creating a small portal uh, about uh, igc being the nodal center and unesco uh, uh, various details about unesco memory of the world program uh and uh, this this webinar is basically a, uh, is a part of that project as a round table discussion to to discuss uh, with all the st stakeholders and i'm so glad today in this webinar each and every stakeholder is present and this is a uh, we, are, we are very fortunate to have that beside that i have been engaged in various other activities and international collaboration and cooperation with the help of unesco new delhi and unesco headquarter there was a mocap meeting first time uh, indian representation was there in this mocap committee held in uh, gamzu in uh, 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 south korea in 2018 uh, this is a meeting of the this international center for documentary heritage uh, first in paris and another in gamzu now it has been operationalized and it's a good opportunity as to collaborate that uh, there was an interregional conference for collaboration of memorial and uh, preservation accessibility very regional committee uh, met in this and i was there then we have a extraordinary meeting of the iac in in paris and i was part of that iran has also done some collaboration with us and number of issues have been identified i have twice i have attended this workshop so uh, with these uh, uh, small introductory words and uh, information in current place uh, i would like to acknowledge thanks uh, from ministry of culture uh, unesco new delhi office and the unesco headquarters and uh, my own organization agency for uh, providing all the support uh, in, in in creating some kind of awareness and activities uh, in agency thank you very much uh, uh, now i would like to close uh, my presentation and come back to uh, uh, have the program i had so now uh, in today's webinar as per the uh, program structure I would like to request and invite uh, Mr. Eric Fault, a guest of honor of today's program, so to, to deliver his address. Over to uh, Mr. Eric. Thank you uh, very much, Ramesh, for setting the tone so uh, uh, comprehensively and uh, effectively. Um, I would like to start by extending warm and uh, respectful greetings to our chief guest, uh, Sri Anand Kumar, Secretary of the Ministry of Culture. And of course, I want to wish a, a very good afternoon to uh, all of you. I uh, also want to thank the Indira Gandhi uh, National Center for the Arts and uh, the Ministry of Culture for organizing this webinar on uh, the creation of an Indian National Register for the Memory of the World Program. Uh, this is very much in line with the uh, original vision of the Memory of the World Program, which is, as 
I think most of you know, to ensure that documentary heritage is fully preserved and protected for all, and with due recognition of cultural mores and practicalities, be permanently accessible to all without hindrance. That's the language that is used to refer to the memory of the World Program. And uh, international, but also regional and national registers are an integral part of that uh, vision. According to uh, the Memory of the World uh, general guidelines, it's important also to underline that these registers are not hierarchical. We are not attaching more importance to international, regional, or national. They are meant to work independently, respecting essentially the same principles and criteria. And uh, UNESCO ascribes equal importance and value to all. If uh, you wonder why there's this differentiation, it's simply because uh, we need to uh, have uh, uh, to differentiate with the extent of the geographic influence of the documentary heritage uh, they contain. At the same time, I think it's important to note at the beginning of uh, this webinar uh, to, uh, to say that uh, I think, again, most of us, uh, maybe not everybody, but most of us are aware of the current operational challenges uh, facing the International Register of the Memory of the World Program. Uh, but certainly, national registers can continue to operate, and we really want to uh, encourage that. And that's why it is so uh, good that you have organized this webinar and started this initiative, because the, the, the guidelines uh, quite clearly state that uh, national registers are to be managed by national memory of, world, of the world committees, or in their absence, by the UNESCO national commissions. And the, the purpose of national registers is to... Uh, uh, specifically inscribe documentary heritage which has been influential within that country and which is judged uh, to have national significance. So it cannot be done uh, without you and without uh, your uh, leadership. An important point, I think, as we start this uh, uh, webinar is to say that uh, quite clearly uh, COVID-19 has come and uh, unfortunately changed our world as we knew it. Uh, lockdowns has forced us all over the world to uh, interact and access information primarily online, and this has posed uh, immense challenges on all sectors. There's no question about it. Uh, one of the most affected sectors is in fact the education sector with millions of school-going children in India and, and, and throughout South Asia relying as best they can on online learning. This uh, pandemic has also exposed a wide range of vulnerabilities in our systems and way of life. And the way the world is responding to this unprecedented global crisis will probably be part of, of history books. Meanwhile, um, memory institutions, including national archives, libraries, museums, and of course, educational and research bodies are uh, already recording the decisions and uh, actions being made uh, which will help uh, future uh, generations. So it's very important for memory institutions to provide uh, records or information management resources necessary for uh, understanding, contextualizing, and overcoming such crises uh, in, the, in the future. One thing that I want to mention is that as a, a response to the effects of the pandemic, UNESCO and its partners have uh, recently issued a, a statement uh, on uh, which was entitled Turning the Threat of COVID-19 into an Opportunity for Greater Support to Documentary Heritage. This is actually a pledge by UNESCO and its partners and the countries, the member states concerned, to provide support through the Memory of the World program uh, to uh, preserve official records related to COVID-19 within the framework of the uh, UNESCO recommendation uh, concerning specifically documentary heritage. And uh, you may want to look at these statements because it highlights some key areas uh, which require uh, shared responsibility for responding to uh, COVID-19 and uh, also enhancing our preparedness for responding to future pandemics. These key areas are based on the, the, the shared educational, social, scientific, and artistic values of documentary heritage. Just to mention two areas of shared responsibility. Uh, it is mentioned that uh, we need to increase collectively investment in the preservation and accessibility of documentary heritage 
as a matter of disaster risk reduction and management. And it is also important for memory institutions to become more readily accessible to researchers, policymakers, media professionals, scientists, and the community at large. We have clearly seen during this crisis that uh, if you're uh, not accessible, simply you don't exist. And this starts with online accessibility. So these values are, I think, uh, very relevant to the topic of today's uh, event and discussion. Uh, certainly the, the, the creation of a national memory of the world register uh, in India will require a lot of investments. You've already said it, Ramesh, and it, it will lead at the same time to a greater accessibility of documentary her uh, heritage for everyone's benefit. So our success in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, will, uh, uh, I hope, also hopefully accelerate the achievement of the 2030 sustainable development uh, agenda and um, reduce inequalities. That's also an added uh, benefit, uh, hopefully. I uh, certainly uh, look forward to, with uh, keen interest to the deliberations and uh, to uh, also in the end receiving the conclusions and recommendations of this webinar to guide our uh, collaboration going forward. And certainly UNESCO New Delhi, as you've kindly said, Ramesh, uh, will continue to be uh, next to you to uh, support and provide uh, advice uh, if and when necessary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Paul. You are always supportive and uh, your assurance and uh, uh, kind of uh, guidelines and uh, this uh, support is very, very important for this program. And uh, thank you for underlining the importance of the National Register. And uh, always your support is uh, of great importance. And, and and we are always honored to have all these uh, guidance support from the news community. And thank you very much for your presence and well, wonderful address. So now I uh, will move ahead program, and it is an honor to uh, invite uh, Honorable Secretary of Culture, Sridhanan uh, Kumarji, to uh, formally inaugurate and deliver his inaugural. So over to you, and thank you and welcome. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Gaur, uh, uh, for inviting me uh, uh, to participate in this important uh, uh, webinar on creation of National Register for UNESCO Memory of the World. Uh, Dear Mr. Eric Fault, who is Director, UNESCO Representative uh, for India, Bhutan, Nepal, Maldives, Sri Lanka, uh, Mr. Uh, Faxon Banda, uh, Ms. Uh, Rachel Hosker, uh, Chair of the UNESCO UK Committee, uh, UNESCO Member of the World Program, uh, my dear friend, Mr. Dr. Shachitana Joshi, and uh, my colleague, uh, Madam Nirupma Kotru, uh, who is uh, Joint Secretary uh, looking after this program in the Ministry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, creation of a register for memory of the world is one of the major initiatives which has been taken by UNESCO for preserving the tangible and intangible heritage assets of the, of, of the world. And I must compliment UNESCO for this important intervention. We preserve our heritage in the present for the future generations to come. In the past, we have lost quite a few important assets at which we cannot see today. It is our bounden duty to preserve the heritage for tomorrow. We in India are quite aware of this importance. In fact, we have been working with UNESCO and we have been and we have enlisted nine, uh, 13 manuscripts under this program with UNESCO authorities. No, nine. nine manuscripts and 13 Intangible. intangible resources with the UNESCO authorities. And this is very minuscule when you compare and consider India. India is a huge resource base. I'm not saying that India alone is a huge resource base. Similar resource base 
bases exist in various other countries also. But if we consider around the globe various tangible and tangible resources, it would run into millions. But then, unless we make a beginning, we cannot achieve the end. And this is a very good beginning. We in India have a national marriage mission as for which we are preserving various manuscripts. We have national archives where we, have, we are documenting and preserving various articles in form of archives. We have various heritage in form of monuments which we are preserving through Archaeological Survey of India and also the state authorities. We have various kinds of intangible forms in form of the dance, in form of paintings, in form of sculptures, in form of other forms. Now, what we are doing with this? In India, we have this knowledge base scattered all over. But now we are trying to take a new initiative and bringing the whole knowledge base together. We plan to create e-heritagepedia, e-Indian heritagepedia, in which we would document all monuments, heritage sites, which are available across the country. And this details would go up to the district level. This will, these details in the e-heritagepedia would be that when a monument was erected, who erected that monument, what is the present stage, what is the importance of the monument. This is as for the past is concerned. But then we have monuments which are in the future, present. And then the monuments will be created in the future. Like which monument is being created today? What are the cost of that monument? Who is the architect of the monument? What are the spatial features of that monument? How? where the design has been brought in and does it have a relevance in the path to the past? Does it have a relevance with the other uh, countries? So we do have, if you see Hampi monuments here in India, if you see Angkor Wat in Cambodia, you have stark similarities. This is for the tangible relevance. If you see the intangible, the Ramayana, which is epic in India, or not, Lord Shrama. The same thing is being talked about in Southeast Asia. So what are the cultural linkages? So we have to build on those cultural linkages. And that's where we are not talking about the Indian heritage alone, we are talking about the heritage of the world. So we do have our own national heritages, but they bear a very strong resemblance and relevance with our neighbors and across the globe. So UNESCO, I must congratulate once again, uh, UNESCO authorities for taking this initiative for creating uh, the register of the world. So when I was talking about the e-national heritage media for India, uh, so we are going to call it e-Indian heritage media. So this would have the details of the monuments, this would have details of our archaeological sites, and uh, this will also have details of our intangible cultural resources. May that be in form of the dance, the formal dance forms, the Kuchipudi, the Kathakali, the Bharatnatyam or Kathak. And they will also have the folk dances, the details of the folk dances. That which are the folk dances from Rajasthan, which are the folk dances of Gujarat, which are the folk dances. So what we are trying to create, we are trying to create our state cultural heritage PDS. And we should have details right from the district level. That which district we have which monuments, which district have which dance forms, which district has which uh, district have which uh, painting, uh, kinds of paintings, which kind of sculptures are being done, brass sculptures are being done, or which kind of potteries are being made. So this district details will 
be fed into the state cultural mapping. And then the state cultural mapping would come into the country's cultural mapping. And this, so this would be in the form of eHeritagePedia, which we'll have. And uh, we, we, we plan to start this exercise uh, very soon. And uh, this would uh, feed into ultimately uh, the, 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 the heritage of the world uh, or the register uh, of, of, the, of, of, uh, of the memory of the world uh, program. So this is one. In the parallel, we are also trying to develop a e, an e-artistpedia. Which are the artists? Who are the artists uh, available across the country? We have famous archaeologists. We have famous conservationists. We do have famous painters. We do have famous dancers. We do have famous sculptors. And, but we do not have this resource base available with us. So we are trying to create an e-artistpedia, which will bring in the details of all artists which are present here in the country, past, present, and the, the, the artists which will be there in the future, which will be documented here. The most important thing is the documentation of heritage. So on the, the, on the lines of the UNESCO uh, initiative, we are taking here initiative in India in form of e-Indian heritagepedia, the district cultural mapping, the state cultural mapping, and also the, uh, the creation of e-artistpedia that would be mapping of the resources of the artists uh, who are available uh, in the country. Beyond this, we would be moving to develop our and uh, to work on uh, our, our cultural linkages with other countries, and especially at the South and Southeast Asia. We do have linkages in form of Buddha. We have a linkage in form of Ramayana. We have linkage in form of temples. We have the linkage in, in terms of manuscripts. And I'm very happy to share it with you all that recently under the leadership of our uh, friend Mr. Sachidananda Go Joshi uh, from IGNCA, we have been able to uh, scan the manuscripts, uh, the Kenju manuscripts, uh, uh, five volumes of Kanjur manuscripts, which are which are there in Mongolia, and we are going to do preservation of all 109 volumes of these Kanjur manuscripts, and we would be giving this assistance and help and aid and uh, build on our relationship with not only Mongolia but other nations which are there, uh, Southeast Asian nations which are there with us. So we are committed to preserve the heritage of our country. We are committed to help our friends uh, in the neighborhood to, uh, to preserve their culture and heritage. We have been assisting Cambodia, we've been assisting in Vietnam. You have seen our work uh, from the Archaeological Survey of India uh, for preserving the, and conserving uh, the temple sites uh, which are there in Vietnam. And recently we have found uh, a shivling uh, in Vietnam, which is very much, which is, which is very unique shivling and uh, which has, which sees uh, uh, very, uh, the resemblance of the shivlings which exist in India. So it means people travel from India to those countries and vice versa. And we shared a strong link. So we want to build on those linkages and uh, then we want to help uh, the global initiative uh, uh, to, uh, of uh, preserving the memory of the world uh, initiated by UNESCO. So we remain uh, the very integral, integral part of this whole initiative. And we would be very happy to provide all, all assistance to all uh, our uh, friend nations and uh, the international body UNESCO. And we plan to work together and uh, we, we would be very happy uh, to be uh, to be part of this program. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to me, and uh, I look forward to greater interaction between UNESCO and our uh, neighbors and other countries in future. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your very very encouraging and enlightening uh, inaugural address. And I'm I'm so happy that you you uh, let us people know because there are about 400 people attending this webinar from not from India but from internationally. And you, you explain about various uh, initiative of Ministry of Culture and, and you very rightly highlighted the, the India's linkages with the neighborhood, particularly South and South Asian country. And Ramayana and Buddhism are one, two are the most important which connects uh, 
uh, many countries, not just one country. So uh, you're, 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 and, and we, we are very, very grateful to you for uh, assuring us all the support and, and, and under your leadership and guidance, I'm sure we'll be able to move ahead and, uh, and we'll, we'll work uh, forward in creation of this National Committee and National Register. I, I remember, sir, when I met you, you, you very, very clearly given the guidelines and we have prepared the proposal and very soon, uh, maybe next week, I will give you that proposal. It's already given to our member secretary and once he's clear that, I will submit that proposal of formation of committee in the National Register for your kind consideration. So thank you very much, sir, for your time. So now uh, moving ahead to, with the program, uh, we have very, very is a eminent speaker, uh, Mr. Faction Banda, who is the head of uh, UNESCO Memory of the World Program uh, at Paris headquarters and also head of uh, Documentary Heritage Unit, which look, look after programs other than MOU also. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Banda, and, and, and now I, I request you to uh, deliver your talk. Uh, over to you. And thank you very much for your presence. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Go, and uh, let me also acknowledge the the presence of uh, the, the the officials uh, in the ministries of of culture and uh, human resources development, uh, and also I'd like to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, Dr. Joshi, and also I'm thankful to our director uh, in, in in New Delhi who has uh, given uh, the opening remarks on behalf of UNESCO as a whole. And what I will be doing essentially is uh, looking at the Memory of the World program uh, in terms of the process in which it's implicated now, uh, because that may have uh, implications for the setting up of uh, not only the National Committee, but also the, the, the National Register. Uh, I think, uh, Professor Goy, you have also done a good job of uh, outlining uh, the history leading up to the formation of uh, the Member of the World Program, outlining the three objectives uh, and also the structure uh, of the program, uh, which in a sense is tripartite, uh, looking at the International Advisory Committee, uh, the, re uh, the regional committees and the, the national committees. Uh, but all this uh, is now uh, in up in the air, if you will, because uh, as of uh, 2017, uh, member states uh, requested the Director General uh, to undertake uh, a comprehensive review of uh, the Member of the World uh, program. Uh, and that review is, is, is going on now. Uh, it began with uh, an open-ended working group uh, of, of, of member states. Discussions were taken up uh, principally on two issues. Uh, the first one is the uh, legal framework of the Member of the World uh, program and the second one is the uh, Member of the World International Register. So with respect to the first issue, uh, the key question was uh, how do you govern uh, the program? Uh, what is the extent of UNESCO member states' involvement in that? Should there be an intergovernmental body? Uh, uh, should that be the executive board or some other um, uh, intergovernmental body? Uh, conceived by member states themselves. And with respect to the Member of the World International Register, uh, questions there, uh, as you would expect, uh, focused on uh, uh, the whole issue of contested nominations uh, between member states. And I think this is very important as you um, conceive the idea of uh, a national uh, register, as I will uh, you know, demonstrate later on. Uh, but so these discussions have carried on, and uh, now they have mutated uh, into uh, a different uh, structure, what we are calling the Limited Participant Working Group, a reduced um, uh, a group, uh, to focus on pending issues uh, that were inherited from the open-ended uh, working group. And that discussion will start uh, most likely uh, in, in a, this, this month, as soon as um, uh, uh, member states, uh, the co-chairs uh, decide uh, when we can, we can have those discussions. Uh, what is important is that uh, throughout these discussions, uh, the Director General decided to put on hold 
the international uh, register uh, and that decision was was reaffirmed by uh, the member states themselves uh, at the last sitting of uh, the open ended working group and so it continues to be the case uh, uh, thankfully uh, the uh, two uh, active regional committees have also decided uh, to suspend their own uh, registers. Uh, national committees, of course, are at liberty to carry on uh, with this, as uh, uh, the Rector um, uh, um, uh, noted uh, in his remarks. Uh, those that would like to put uh, the, the, the national registers on hold are also welcome uh, to do that. And the point there is that in discussing the general guidelines which provide a framework for how the program operates. Uh, one of the issues there is uh, how the relationships should be conceived uh, among the different entities, the national committees, the uh, regional committees, the international advisory committee, and the UNESCO um, uh, secretariat. Uh, and so uh, these are also issues that are being discussed by, by our member states. And linked to that, particularly in the context of the International Register, uh, is the whole question of the uh, criteria for, uh, for inscription. That also uh, is being, is being uh, discussed, and it will have implications on how national committees uh, operate. Uh, but having said that, I think that uh, what is important to underline here with respect to uh, national registers uh, is, is, is the fact that uh the formation of such registers is the preserve of national memory of the world committees and this point has been stressed uh by by our director there uh, we cannot uh go around this it is important to ensure the autonomy uh, of national committees um, and therefore i think it is important for for india to set up a national committee of its own uh, and uh, there are discussions about how that can be effectively done as well. Uh, one of the things uh, that that is being uh, tabled uh, is that uh, a national committee can, of course, be uh, the idea for setting up a national committee uh, can be broached by an individual. Uh, it can be broached by the national commission uh, uh, for UNESCO. But whatever happens, if it is an individual, for example, comes up with such an idea. Uh, then it must be ultimately endorsed uh, by the uh, National Commission or in the absence of the National Commission, the relevant government body in charge of relations uh, with UNESCO. This is to ensure that uh, governmental involvement uh, is built into all this because this as I have um, suggested, uh, reflects the discussions that are going on about the intergovernmental character uh, uh, of the program, which, which member states are keen on uh, emphasizing. And also it is important to, 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 to note here that uh, uh, when such national member of the world committees are, are set up, uh, the individuals that serve there do so in their personal capacities uh, or as representatives of memory institutions or cultural uh, authorities. This is to preserve the, the expert uh, driven character of the program as well, which member states so far in the discussions have also uh, reflected as an important uh, principle. Uh, but also, of course, uh, it is important to note that uh, such national committees uh, may be highly uh, formalized, uh, as they are in some, in some cases, uh, or they may be structured uh, in an informal fashion, but that, again, uh, responds to the, um, uh, to the peculiar characteristics of, uh, of a member state. And of course, uh, the activities uh, of such memorial, uh, uh, national committees are, are varied. Uh, uh, what is important uh, is that uh, whatever they do must reflect the vision, mission, and objectives of the Memory of the World program. That alignment is very important, and I cannot uh, overemphasize it. Uh, this is a key issue 
And therefore, as you consider setting up a, a national committee, uh, you'll have to make sure that you, you understand the general direction of the program uh, and where also uh, member states' um, uh, uh, preferences seem to be headed. Having uh, said that, um, uh, another thing that I could not, therefore, with respect to the question of, 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 of a national register, uh, is that there are some lessons uh, that, that you, may, you may wish to learn from what we are going through now here at the, uh, at, at the UNESCO uh, headquarters with respect to the uh, International uh, Register, which was set up in 1995, uh, with the first inscriptions uh, added in 1997. Now, of course, uh, national registers reflect the specificities of our member states, but the selection criteria uh, in all cases, whether it's, in, it's, it's regional, uh, in both cases, whether regional or national, must reflect uh, the criteria set for the International Member of the World Register. And those criteria are now under review. So this is a point uh, that you will need to latch on as you uh, conceive uh, your, 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 national, your national register. And you might need to work very, very closely with uh, the uh, member of the World Secretariat in order to determine which direction the discussions are going. Uh, we can also share with you the latest uh, um, uh, versions of the uh, general guidelines uh, where member states appear to have some kind of agreement uh, on, 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 on some issues, and that will help you to craft uh, your, your, your register. Um, if, 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 I might, if, I might, if I might conclude, I, I think uh, um, there the, the, the are key questions that you, you need to ask yourself with respect to uh, the, the formation of the National Register and what it will do. Again, this is against the background of the discussions that we are, uh, we are having here. And one important question um, uh, is how should a national committee deal with a nominated item of documentary heritage, which is actually or potentially implicated in interstate contestation. That's very important. Uh, this is important potentially uh, uh, because such an item could end up being proposed for the Member of the World International Register. And if there is tension at the level of the nation state, and that tension is detected early on, it will, in a sense, um, um, uh, indicate to you which direction that nomination could go when it comes to the international uh, register. And we are keen on making sure that all along the chain, uh, controversy is reduced as much as possible so that when it comes in the end, to the uh, international register, uh, considerations uh, will be uh, uh, will be will be such that there will be less uh, friction. I will I will I will read out to you a few questions that the co-chairs of the open-ended working group posed with respect to the international register, and this is uh, information that is publicly available. It's on our website in the co-chair's report. But just listening to these questions might indicate to you uh, what, what the issues are about. At what stage does the panel of experts embark upon an assessment of nomination files? This is a critical issue. Should it be as soon as the criteria for admissibility has been completed and the nomination files have been uploaded on um, a, a platform exclusive to member states. This is an important point to note that there, there is a proposal for the creation of a member states in exclusive platform where all the nominations uh, will be placed. Should it be after all the contested nomination files have been identified and isolated from the rest? Or should it be throughout the process up until it is time for the 
uh, deciding body, it could be our executive board for the International Register or any other intergovernmental body that member states will come up with. And finally, what should be the modalities for any dialogue for nominations contested? There is the old question of member states getting involved in dialogue and uh, Professor Go, you made reference to joint nominations, whether it's Iran, Turkey or any other uh, UNESCO member state. It is important to make sure that that uh, dialogue has a form of, 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 of structure and uh, it, its outcomes are predictable. Uh, this at least is what some member states are saying, and it might be important for you at the level of the National Register to think about, about such issues as well. Uh, and so perhaps I should end on that note. You know, I hope that in summing up, um, you, you understand, uh, first of all, that there is now a comprehensive review of the Memory of the World program, uh, which is looking at general guidelines which, get, which, which uh, govern the, the program. Uh, and that as part of that, uh, the criteria for uh, inscription are under review themselves, and that therefore the discussions about a national register should be informed by that process as well. Uh, but also that as part of that, the international register is on hold, so uh, uh, regional registers, national registers continue uh, uh, because they are the preserve of our member states. Uh, uh, through their national committees, and this, of course, reinforces uh, your desire to set up a national committee in India. Um, and of course, finally, that there are problems at the uh, international level with respect uh, to the to the to the international register, and those problems might, uh, in some way or other, mirror what might happen at, at, at the national level to the extent that the two might at some point uh, enmesh, especially if an item of documentary heritage at the national level is of such uh, international significance that it is elevated for possible inscription on the international register. I'd like to end there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Adab, for such a wonderful and excellent uh, uh, overview of the entire scenario. And and your wonderful suggestions, like uh, the example you have quoted and the kind of suggestions you have given. Definitely, uh, the roadmap, you, in one way you have given us a roadmap to, uh, and, and particularly uh, you, you rightly mentioned to, to learn from the current uh, examples and, and particularly for contested nominations. So uh, how we can have a, a good roadmap to have a successful register in place. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad and I'm sure when we'll, while we'll be drafting the, the committee and the, the guidelines, these all your suggestions will be taken care because uh, these are the these are suggestions from somebody who is who's the last almost two years is doing so much to convince the, the, the member states and the, the various stakeholders in, in, in various issues regarding the program and your commitment is uh, so so overwhelming that uh, we always uh, feel very, very, and uh, it may be the information regarding the current process and the, the, the pro whatever process is going on. So I think uh, uh, I, I'm so glad you are here today and you were able to give us a roadmap and uh, that roadmap will help us in drafting uh, the guidelines and the regulations for the, the national register and the national committees. And absolutely both are linked to each other and you're, you're all, all valuable suggestions will be taken care uh, and, and will be, once again, I, I express my very, very uh, sincere thanks to you for your kind presence and valuable thoughts in today's, uh, and, and, and it will be a landmark, today will be the landmark in the history of Indian uh, program for memory of the world program, because Thank we you. have uh, people from uh, headquarters, we have people from UNESCO New Delhi office, we have a person from regional committee, uh, representative vice chairman, vice chairperson, and we also have uh, our representative from ministry and also from both the ministries, National Commission and, and Ministry of Culture. So I'm glad you have, you have put forward your views in front of everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we'll move to uh, our next speaker, uh, a very experienced in the person who has practically 
did it. So we want to learn from experiences, Rachel, that how you you manage everything and and how we can learn from your experiences. Your your guidance, your valuable experience will be a kind of uh, step in uh, direction for us. So please uh, unmute and over to you. We would love to listen to you. Thank you very much, Professor Gar. I am delighted and very honoured and humbled to be asked to speak to you today and to share um, our experience. Um, please be aware that um, with the review, then that gives us opportunity to talk to colleagues like yourself about how we can do things better, how we can improve things. And I've got a few thoughts today on things I've been reflecting on as chair of the UK uh, Memory of the World uh, Committee. I'll give you a little bit of background as to how um, this national committee got going in the UK um, uh, several years ago now. I am the second chair, so I uh, want to um, give a, a full credit and thanks to Elizabeth Oxborough Cowan, who really pushed to get the UK National Committee going um, and has been an outstanding figure in the world of archives. Um, and I had very um, big shoes to step into and take over from Elizabeth. So many thanks to her and to uh, the unfailing dedication of the UK Committee as well. Um, I would like to thank all the honoured guests for their contributions so far and um, for uh, being part of this webinar as well to show how important this is um, to um, India and other countries. Um, I think in these times it's even more important to reflect on these things, to understand who we are, to think about what reflects our um, identity, um, our nations, our people, our communities. And that is at the heart of what the UNESCO Memory of the World um, programme is. Um, Mr. Faxon Banda gave me a very good platform to move forward with and I hope that my contribution will be about the practicalities of running a national uh, committee and what we found um, has worked and things that we could share with you which you can uh, comment on or use or, or whatever. We are very open um, to that. Um, the UK uh, National Committee uh, was uh, pushed for and got together and started in 2008 and the first inscriptions began in 2010 and uh, we do a, a biennial um, inscription so we don't do it every year we do it um, every other year and that allows us time to put the call out for people to um, gather the evidence that they require, gather the um, uh, support and the uh, references that we ask for, and also to talk to uh, members of the committee for advice on um, and guidance on how you go about this. And I think it's quite important uh, as a point in that um, it's not about giving uh, guidance in any preferential way. You have to be very careful about how, what you can offer and be absolutely uh, democratic in the same guidance you offer everybody who comes to you. That responsibility is very important and Mr. Faxenbander men mentioned earlier about the governance being key. And that accountability that we have has to be absolutely clear and visible. We do get asked about what our processes are, how we document things and as an archivist, um, who's written about how you, you deal with uh, documenting processes in an archival sense, it's document, document, document. Um, so while we are um, talking about entering um, documentary evidence and heritage onto an inscription, you have to document your process um, as well. We have a, a structure of a, a committee from across um, various expertise. It's not all archivists like myself. We have had uh, historians um, uh, and librarians, people from art backgrounds, from um, 
community archives from uh, national institutions to provide a variety uh, of things um, in terms of expertise. And one of the things that I'm considering at the moment with an eye on how UNESCO considers its areas of expertise and who its ex expert advisors are is how do we get that cross section of representation if we're all from the same backgrounds, if we're all from the same kind of institutions and the same kind of um, training, then we, we could potentially get quite a skewed view of what is accepted onto the register. Um, and again, um, Mr. Eric Falk mentioned that um, we have seen in these times how privilege and um, underprivilege has worked within, within the pandemic. And I think, you know, that works too in cultural heritage, where we have silences in our, our cultural heritage, where we have silences because it's not representative, has to be taken into account. One of the things in the past few years that we've worked very um, uh, consistently on is on a document that is called Seeking Significance. Um, I'm going to hold it up to you. I printed it out <laughs> and I can share the screen, but it's, a, it's quite a big document. And so, um, that particular um, document is the practical guide that Elizabeth, um, uh, she, uh, she, she, she built this document with our input as a committee. Um, and it's a practical guide to identifying and articulating significance in documentary heritage. We all know there have been those points where we know something of cultural heritage is significant and everyone talks about it, its significance. But what do you mean by that? What does that actually mean? How do you, how do you articulate that to wider communities, um, to our governments, to um, people who fund places that look after um, cultural heritage? And on that idea of funding, um, we have also discussed about the, the UNESCO brand. This has to be used very mindfully and carefully. It also acts as, you know, if it acts as a, a, a moniker, an identifier that this is endorsed. Um, and uh, we have seen a real practical evidence of it working for institutions who have had collections inscribed to push for um, uh, greater resources or, or, or just recognition um, of what they are doing, which is um, for society very, very important. The few things that I wanted to, to bring up in terms of thought, so type of things as chair that are on my mind is about representation about diversity, about the vulnerability of not just items in a, a, a sense of conservation, but also the vulnerability of communities and the items that are in communities. And when we, we talk about that, um, it, it's, it's, it's not just those that are very visible, it's those that do not want to pass over their cultural heritage to uh, and to have it institutionalized. How can this program best support uh, the, them? They may not even know about a program like this because it's communicated in a particular way through listservs, through um, uh, professional networks that they just aren't part of. So it, it, it's, it would be an interesting thing for um, not only the um, international uh, side of um, memory of the world, but also the national committees to think about how we uh, reach people, how we, um, mar it's, it's not marketing, it's more about the messaging that is very, very important. One of the things with my other hat on as um, the uh, lead archivist at the University of Edinburgh is we've talked with our researchers and our students about what does it mean to collect in this time and the conversations we've had are relevant for this program as well. Nobody owes us their memory. Nobody owes us um, that uh, and to actually put something on the register is quite a big thing 
uh, and what does that mean? Uh, we may think something is really important, but how do we make this program relevant uh, is, is our job, um, I think, in the next uh, few years. Um, we mentioned in terms of governance and accountability, how we avoid conflict. We have quite a vigorous program and process, which is all laid out on our, our web pages. Um, this is a, a, a form that you have to submit. It has particular criteria and um, areas that have to be um, dealt with. Um, it deals with the significance. It deals with um, the methodology for doing this. It, I'm just bringing up the, the key areas so I can tell you those. Um, there has to be the categories which come across as um, the inherent cultural significance, but what is it to community and individual, as I've spoken about before? What is it in terms of research, partnership? What is it as an asset? What is it in terms of geographical sense? We ask people to look at the provenance of items and we know provenance can be a tricky thing. It can be a contested thing. It can actually uh, bring up some of that conflict that uh, uh, Mr. Fax and Banda mentioned before. We also ask people to document the authenticity of an item and that again um, has to be well thought through and well represented. We talk about um, very practical things like the size, the age of the item, the chronology of the period it's covered. Is it ha does it have a completeness about it? Uh, what is the media that it is, is held on? What is its condition and its rarity or commonality? We talk about access. And that is a huge, uh, hugely important thing. If UNESCO were endorsing that this uh, program that we run allows us to put items on the register, then they have to be meaningful for all, accessible for all. And that has to be demonstrated in the process as well. We do ask if there are any threats uh, to this. Um, if there are cultural markers, landmark dates, personalities who have a significant role uh, have an agency about them uh, to the, the this um, is there a group memory a shared knowledge what is the current usage the sensory impact the emotional impact the aesthetic impact spiritual myth and legend civic role historic meaning and current relevance I could go on with the other criteria, but you can read the document for yourself. It's publicly um, available. But all of these things, it's not just about a very traditional look at uh, what the program is. It is about um, actually uh, documenting what the uh, importance of these things are. So significance and what we do are in that area is, is, is at the key of what we we, we have our process as a committee when we meet we have an amazing secretary who um, and again all of us are volunteers there is there isn't any funding for our national committee we are reliant on the goodwill of our employers um, and and um, Thankfully, um, Rothschild Bank over the past few years has provided lunch for us when we all meet. Um, and we are, um, when we do meet, that is to discuss the nominations. The process as a committee um, means that we are, are, um, have to look at all of them. Um, and against the kind of criteria that I mentioned, we, we put a, a, a significance marker against all of those things. We then um, uh, buddy up with another member of the committee and look at the same ones. And if we feel strongly that they should or they shouldn't be entered on the register, then um, we, we make the presentation and the case at the meeting. Um, and then it's debated by the group. Sometimes it has been as easy as the whole committee agrees. Sometimes there has been some very, very rigorous debate, which is um, a very, very 
it's where expertise comes into the fore and why it, it's useful to have a wide variety of expertise on a, on a committee. Um, it's, um, it's very interesting when you're going through, it's great to have that documentation to refer to, to go, so this is a nice thing to have, but what is its significance? Um, who does it matter to? And having those checks and balances with your own um, hidden prejudices um, is very important um, as well. And I think I should like to um, conclude that it's not just about treasures. It's not about having a register of amazing things that are tre treasures. It, it, the word is memory. It's about representing what we think, feel and see as in terms of identity. Um, there are gaps in this. There are likely nothing is perfect uh, in terms of our, our processes but it's documenting what matters. Um, what, what I'm reflecting now for the UK committee, um, and this is being very helpful in doing that, and what do we do now? What are we not aware of that isn't being representative? And how do we reach people that this program is vital to the survival of um, you know, who we are? How do we fit in the world um, as communities and as individuals? And I um, hope that my brief overview that I have just given you gives you a, a sense of what it's like uh, being a committee and how to uh, develop that. Um, I am also, with my other hat on, uh, proud that at the University of Edinburgh we have two collections that are on the UK National Committee. One is the Carmichael Watson collection, which is... Um, uh, a folklorist who went up into the Scottish Highlands and Islands and uh, captured um, tales and song and disappearing language. Um, the other one is uh, for our Lothian Health Service archive where it's the HIV and AIDS um, campaign material where um, in Scotland uh, there were real problems in the late 80s, early 90s, and it was the work of those pioneering individuals that has been recognised as well. And I hope that gives you a sense of um, it's not always just the things in the national institutions, um, which are amazing, um, but um, it's also in local authority archives, in community archives. Um, there are things in, uh, that from the British Library, from the National Library of Scotland that are in there, in Gaelic, in different languages that are seen in the UK um, that are important uh, as well. Thank you very much for listening to what I had to say and I am always well, uh, would welcome um, any questions or any contact from uh, anybody if, if um, you have thoughts and ideas um, or I can help. Thank you Rachel for such a wonderful and uh, beautifully narrating and, and, and explaining each and every steps involved in creation of register and the, the, the kind of like it is, it is, it is so uh, enlightening to hear you, and and I was, I was feeling like it was very, very nice to know what, but at the same time I was feeling it, 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 some kind of anxiety, like how challenging it is to uh, create a register, the various aspects, uh, and, and 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 you rightly said that uh, basically it is not just just about creating this this register, it is creating an identity for our cultural heritage and giving perception or a kind of message to the entire community and engaging community and connecting with them. So well, thank you very much and, and I'm sure our observers and, and I may have a few questions to ask you in the end. Uh, I, that's, that's why I'm keeping certain things. Uh, but before I think my observers and other things, uh, our member security, Dr. Joshi, i like to have some, some comments so that, that we can finally uh, discussed by, by our addresses of our observers and uh, our other. Thank you, Rachel. It was an honor with you and, and, yes. and definitely we'll be traveling you with all those information which you have just mentioned and, and maybe uh, asking you some more help in, in this context. Thank you very much. So now I would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Sachidana Joshi, Member Secretary Agency for his uh, uh, comments and then, then we'll move to our observers. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gore, and uh, uh, 
um, I must congratulate um, the IGNCA team for putting up this uh, webinar, uh, which is on the memory of the world program, issues and challenges. Uh, Mr. Eric Falt, uh, Mr. Frankson Bonda, uh, Ms. Nirupma Kotu, Mr. Rachel Oscar, and uh, other dignitaries and uh, we just heard uh, Secretary Culture giving a very fantastic uh, opening uh, address to all of us. Uh, it has been uh, really great to hear all of you uh, related to the uh, memory of the world program. And when we say memory of the world, I, I think uh, my, my idea of India goes back to the Vedic traditions. Um, I've been, I don't know, maybe 3,005 years, 500 years old or maybe much more than that which has been enlisted as the UNESCO World Heritage, which is, uh, which is uh, one of the biggest textual traditions of the world. And uh, it, has, it has flown since ages where we, where we uh, exactly don't know uh, who are the creator of those entire fantastic documents, which is known as Ved, then Puran, then Upanishads, then Brahman, then Aranyak, and so on and so forth. So much of wealth of knowledge has been created at that time. Uh, we are only trying to cultivate, we are only trying to revive, we are only trying to sort of decipher all those things even today. So that kind of a rich tradition uh, the Indian culture has. After that, uh, of course, the tradition of Ramayana or Ramkatha, which is prevalent in most of the most part of the world. In fact, uh, uh, in, in the entire Southeast Asian region and the uh, East Asian region, Central Asian region, and of course, the West Asian region, part of West Asia also, where we find rich traces of the Ramayana tradition and where we have more and more textual things which are, which are available there in, in some form of other, some memory of other. That is, that is very interesting. Similarly, the Mahabharata tradition, which we see uh, uh, being spread throughout the world and uh, throughout the length and breadth of the world. That is the remarkable tradition which we are trying to cultivate and revive and we are trying to sort of document and digitize. Um, that is an effort which we do at the Ministry of Culture. And uh, this is because, uh, because we, we really think that, uh, as, as Rachel has rightly said, it is not, it is not only about register it is also about the memory which is being created and that is the memory which relates to the intellectual memory uh, when students of uh, students of library science they start their course of emily there the first paper is universe of knowledge and when we say universe of knowledge the entire domain of knowledge is universal it does not belong to either india or uk or usa or philippines or something like that it belongs to the entire world to the entire mankind and so the effort should be made that it should be made available to the entire mankind entire hum human race whosoever wants to study whosoever wants to go deeper into this whosoever wants to learn something out of it must get that kind of access to that knowledge. And that is why I think the memory of the world program has been created. So this entire world becomes one family, global family, and the entire, uh, entire memory is collected through some resource that, so that it is made available to the people of, of the world by and large. So that, that rich tradition has to be understood and that, uh, that purpose of this entire scheme has to be uh, understood and then only we can move ahead with this. Uh, Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts has been doing uh, uh, its work of uh, um, uh, archiving and digitizing so many things. We have, we have remarkable collections. We have collection of Anand Kumar Swami, which was given and given to us by them. Then we have Elizabeth Bruner's painting collection. Then we have Raja Deen Neal's photographic collection. Then we have Lance Dance collection. And uh, in addition to that, we also have Mohan Khokar dance collection, which is one of the biggest collection of uh, dance and uh, dance and classical music of the entire Southeast Asian region. Other than that, we also have developed the national cultural audio visual archive which is one of its own kind which is archiving the audio visual material which is available uh, which is a non commercial audio visual material which is available it is it is it is world's first trusted digital repository that is that is a remarkable achievement which ignca has achieved in recent past uh, by doing the archival work as far as the audio visual material is concerned. We are also uh, doing some digitization and archiving through National Manuscripts Mission. And we have uh, so far created more than 45 lakhs of uh, 
digitized documents as far as manuscripts is concerned we all know that the amount of manuscripts available in india is huge uh, and uh, it, it still we are counting how much manuscripts we really have in india but still the process is on i know i am sure that in other parts of the world where where we have traces of uh, Uh, manuscripts related to india or say indic manuscripts uh, the the amount amount can go much more than even 2 crores which we are estimating right now so the work is going on it is it is it is it is a it is a herculean task which is being done with the help of scholars and experts who know these things and other than that we also have the uh, we have also have created portals like vedic heritage portal where we are trying to also decipher the knowledge one 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 thing is to digitize and archive this and to store this but the other important aspect of the entire thing is to decipher this thing for the for the benefit of the others that is also the process which is on and which we are trying to do so uh, in addition to that we also have uh, collected uh, enormous amount of books and periodicals and uh, um, uh, written notes and written materials Uh, in form of gifts by eminent scholars uh, which has gone beyond beyond 1 lakh now 1 lakh books go over 1 lakh books we have already uh, received from various scholars and uh, and uh, eminent uh, personalities so that is in totality is becoming a huge intellectual resource as far as india is concerned and uh, the idea of uh, starting the national register only came when when we realized that uh, we have been sending the nominations every year for the memory of the world program and uh, quite often we send uh, 10 or 20 or 15 whatever number may be and people work work very hard to prepare these nominations there are there are there are um, parameters and there are there are there are uh, limitations by which we may not get registered into the memory of the world program but then we must also have an account to create its uh, india's own register so that the national register is being created as far as the memory is concerned and all those all those proposals which were sent to the memory of the world program can be enlisted as the national Uh, register as the national register and it also becomes a huge resource for information and for for the for the knowledge and dissemination so that is the idea that is how we we have started this mission this program and that is why we have been we have requested the ministry of culture to support us for that program and i am i am happy that uh, the joint secretary ms kothru is here and uh, who is at the helm of the affairs who has who has always been supportive to such kind of work and ignc is likely to get that uh, support from the ministry other than that we are also trying to create the uh, national register for the memory of the world program and and that is very important third important aspect on which ignc is trying to do something is is to create awareness amongst them unfortunately there are there are many people institutions scholars who who even do not know about the memory of the world program and in fact even if they know they do not understand the nuances of this program like uh, like eric falt has uh, in in his inaugural address or mr bonda in his in his address also explained about this program uh, i mean very little awareness is uh, is there as far as this program is concerned ignc is taking it forward and we are trying to create awareness among the students scholars institutions uh, various archives collectors who have collected the material so that uh, we have enough nominations and these nominations are filled in proper manner Uh, and proper documentation is being done for this another important uh, aspect on which we are focusing is the training part how do we train people to to look into these areas we need to have good archivist we need to have good curators we need to have good conservationist we need to have good people who are expert in museums and arch archival studies so that enough enough manpower is available enough enough intellectual power is available to take care of all these wealth Uh, in india and that training part is very 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 important and the the task is mammoth uh, unfortunately in in uh, in recent part enough enough uh, attention could not be given to this area now now everybody is geared up ministry of culture has really taken taken the lead to to really train the manpower in form of in form of degree and diploma programs in form of the short term and long term training programs so that uh, 
uh, youth enough youth get attracted towards these streams which is very important and once this once this resource is available then i think uh, no task would would become difficult no task would become uh, herculean so the, those are the two aspects which on which ignca is focusing its attention right now and uh, i am happy that this kind of webinar is going to help us in uh, in generating enough awareness among the among the people by and large i could see 300 and 80 or 390 participants joining this webinar and i am sure that at least some of them would get get motivated to work in this area which is which is very welcome and whosoever wants to volunteer to come in these fields uh, with open hands and open heart we would like to welcome them because we need good people to work in this field we need dedicated dedicated person uh, to work in this field like rachel was saying uh, even 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 they bring lunch uh, for their own uh, meetings which is which is a remarkable thing and i really appreciate that kind of a voluntary zeal to work in this area because whatever we are doing here in the field of culture and conservation is not for us it is for the generations to come it is for the posterity so the future generations who would come and study and understand the the richness of our heritage would always thank us for doing us this job at 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 this time uh, i know that uh, this kind of work does not attract enough glamour and that is why some youngsters do not get attracted towards this these fields but uh, let me assure you that uh, the the glamour which you have in these fields is is for the generations so you if you want to live long in the memory we should work in these areas and remain in the memory of the uh, generations to come so whatever we are doing it for the posterity whatever we are doing it for the benefit of the mankind today we in the in the era of pandemic could understand that uh, whatever whatever thing which saved us was was the thing uh, which related to our acquired ancestral knowledge which related to our acquired heritage which related to our traditions so we know that the importance of these things is immense and now in the in the time of pandemic we have once again realized its importance and in days to come we need to consolidate our faith and belief in this so that we move ahead with more positive fruitful and definite steps i must congratulate everyone who is here and uh, uh, thank them for uh, their nice gesture of being a part of this wonderful webinar thank you very much namaskar thank you sir uh, it is always uh, uh, very pleasant to listen you your word of wisdom and also your excellent support because whatever we are doing we are doing under your leadership with your all support and you are always very open and transparent very encouraging to uh, take these activities so now uh, we are moving into the last part of the program with the uh, Uh, addresses of our observers and uh, uh, in this direction i first uh, uh, like to invite uh, ms nirupama potru she is a joint secretary uh, ministry of culture and in charge of all unesco uh, uh, programs uh, including uh, intangible culture heritage or uh, and, and 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 such a excellent support uh, particularly i am so happy to uh, after her joining i think things have start moving because when i write something discuss with her she is so support okay go ahead so such a positive attitude and very promptness in doing things so we are we are honored to have you here so please uh, um, start your address thank you mr gaur for the really uh, warm words i don't think i'm so deserving and good evening and a very warm welcome again Uh, from me to all the participants our esteemed panelists and all those who have joined us today in fact i was just reading some of the chat comments and i find there are a lot of uh, people from archiving and library field i'm really happy to see that and a lot of students of course which is really heartening i mean people may not know exactly what we are trying to do here and that is why it's so important as you rightly said uh, mr gaur i must compliment you the opening remarks were very uh, you know well explaining what we are doing why we are having this webinar it's such an excellent start i really compliment you your team and joshi ji for his uh, leadership we are really happy to work with igncf for this uh, 
creating a national register and uh, it's uh, again very uh, important for us to have the support of unesco delhi team we're really happy mr eric fault and his team have been again a huge support they've been working closely with us and i'm sure they will work with us uh, you know in creating this register so we haven't had a national register uh, on memory of the world and in fact we have had very sporadic kind of participation as far as the inscriptions are concerned the nominations because i've seen after 97 there was a big lull we had one inscription in 97 of the tamil medical manuscript uh, collection of the institute of asian studies and then the next one was in 2003 which was the dutch east india uh, archives then 2005 we had one then 2007 then two in 2011 one in 13 and two in 17 which is the last two with the gilgit manuscript and the maitreyi varakaram so um, we a of course need to engage uh, better with unesco the headquarter to ensure that uh, since our country is vast we have so many elements where even as secretary was rightly mentioning earlier mr anand kumar whether it's intangible heritage or tangible or uh, manuscripts and documentary heritage which is the subject matter of this particular convention of unesco which is uh, preserving strengthening and ensuring that this memory which is the documentary heritage of the world is preserved for future generations so the first thing is the awareness and um, as mr gaur was uh, telling us you know how they have been doing seminars and working for joint nominations like on molana rumi which is uh, which will be an excellent uh, linkage uh, for us with turkey and in fact previously we did have a joint nomination which was the dutch east india company with netherlands sri lanka south africa and indonesia so that was a great example of a very nice joint nomination and uh, you know why our secretary was mentioning about some of the initiatives we are taking is because there's a very close link between tangible heritage intangible cultural heritage which is huge it could be as you know we have kumb and yog as our uh, two of the elements inscribed recently in 2017 now there are very important documents connected to your the manuscripts so you see every element of our tangible heritage or intangible would have some documentary heritage associated with it for example a building of a monument say the taj mahal in the medieval times would have a documentation somewhere of that period so uh, you know there were there, there's so many beautiful illustrated manuscripts of course we have we really blessed i sometimes see our manuscripts and i get so fascinated because they are really excellent uh, manuscripts with beautiful paintings uh, done on them you know whether it was on paper or palm leaf there used to be very nice illustrations especially in the medieval period uh, we have a lot of those right from gujarat to you know uh, the north and south everywhere and uh, even in our, if you have seen some of our miniature paintings also have on the side there will be uh, a small coat or a, you know uh, mentioning what it is you know what's happening so uh, as i said as i was saying our tangible intangible heritage also gets reflected in our documentary heritage so uh, it is very important to not just preserve this but document it which is what we are doing so preservation and conservation is of course the very very uh, important step we have to do at the back because unless we conserve and preserve our treasures how will we uh, you know digitize and document them obviously one cannot be done without the other so as uh, joshi ji also just mentioned we have a national manuscript mission in our ministry which is doing an excellent job you know we estimate that there are about 10 million manuscripts all over india in private and public hands now to reach to all those parties to actually get them to agree to share them with us and we preserve conserve and hand them back and digitize them that's really important so we are doing that really extensive work of identifying those manuscripts wherever they may be in whoever's possession then uh, conserving them preserving them carrying out very careful conservation in situ at source and because many of them are so fragile you can't move them whether they are palm leaf or paper or any other material 
or uh, bark or you know animal uh, skin or anything uh, there and uh, so digitization is critical and we are moving towards that we are hoping that maybe in the next month we'll about 0.3 million to begin with uh, manuscripts we will put in the public domain and later we'll see if we can allow uh, people to download use them in whatever way they can but essentially this there are a lot of interested people who are really uh, you know happy to see our manuscripts and we know we get so many inquiries from research scholars who are very eager to you know uh, access our uh, documentary heritage so when we make this national register we'll be doing a great service to everyone because in one place we'll be able to have uh, you know the wide wide range of uh, documentary heritage of uh, centuries of this country um, as Joshi ji was also mentioning, I mean, the earliest manuscripts we have are Vedic, some of the earliest are Vedic manuscripts and uh, going back to 1000 BC perhaps. And we have a continuous heritage, continuous unbroken chain of, uh, as it is in art and other elements of intangible culture, that it's so in documentary. So you find, you know, the whole wide range of documents, archival records and manuscripts which have documented our growth as a civilization, as one of the oldest thriving, unbroken, continuous civilizations of the world. So I'm really um, glad we have done all this and uh, you know started, made a beginning today. We are talking to people. I hope this generates a lot of interest, not just among scholars and students in India, but abroad. As Joshiji said, we'll be so happy to work with all of you who are interested to get your comments your suggestions your feedback and the first two things which are right up on our action plan is making a national committee on memory of the world and making a national register and i assure you that we will ensure that we do these in the shortest possible time and i really look forward to engaging again with all the uh, esteemed panelists and uh, our participants it was really nice to hear uh, Mr. Banda talk about the need for government involvement and ownership of the National Committee. I'm completely with him on this. Yes, there has to be government involvement because there has to be some sort of, uh, you know, uh, ownership at uh, uh, state level of what you're doing. Otherwise, it doesn't get the kind of credibility which is required. And again, Ms. Husker showed us what were the challenges when they made the National Committee. Uh, you know, during setting up and also, you know, how we can have people challenging the provenance of manuscripts. It does happen. We find these challenges in our National Manuscript Mission as well. But hopefully, with the blessings of Almighty, because we are all doing something really good, something really important for conserving our heritage, I'm sure we'll overcome all these challenges and we will be able to very soon, hopefully, move forward on making this National uh, Register for memory of the world. So uh, really happy to be here and engage with all of you. And thank you, Dr. Gore again. It was really nice to listen to all the panelists and to read all the comments of uh, all the participants. Thank you, all the best. Thank you, ma'am, for, I'm so happy and uh, I'm feeling very uh, excited and, and, and I think our efforts in organizing this event in your small brief assurance has given me a lot of encouragement. Yes, now we'll move further and forward. I think uh, so, uh, so many thanks for your uh, wonderful comments. You have very, very, very uh, importantly highlighted all the discussions and, and in your, uh, your support is crucial. And, and I'm sure I have already drafted the uh, proposal and very, maybe next week I will, I will send it to you. And, and, and UNESCO New Delhi is very, very supportive. And, they all are very excited that how and when we can have this national committee. And even colleagues from uh, other places and that quarter, everybody wants that India should have a national committee with, with kind of uh, 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 vast heritage we have. And it is very important for. So thank you very much for your wonderful assurances and comments. I'm, I'm so delighted. So now, uh, moving ahead, uh, we have another uh, observer, Mr. Ezekiel Jalamani, as an uh, advisor in information communication in the UNESCO New Delhi office. Mr. Dalamani, would like to uh, give uh, your observations or 
some comments or any suggestions for this? Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ko. Um, I think uh, from the UNESCO side, uh, the director, uh, Mr. Eric Falt, and also my colleague, uh, Faxen Pan, have covered um, you know, the support or the uh, collaboration that uh, can be expected from our side. I think for us, uh, it's, we're looking forward really to implementing this uh, proposal that uh, you are preparing and that you will submit. And we want to ensure that uh, all the stakeholders will be asso associated with the effort, especially the member of the World Secretariat uh, in UNESCO in Paris, uh, so that we are informed by the latest decisions and latest guidelines uh, going forward. So I don't have any other special message except to say that um, in keeping with uh, the statement made, made by the director, we, we will we'll provide our support uh, as much as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sajikal. Uh, thank you, and your support is always uh, there, and we always enjoy all kind of encouragement from UNESCO New Delhi office. Uh, Ms. Nita Prashad, uh, Joint Secretary from Ministry of HRD, uh, she has to leave for some meeting because uh, some meeting was called by uh, Ms. Shah. So she, she, has, she has assured all support and uh, whatever is required from UNESCO New, New Delhi uh, Indian National Commission. She is there to help us. And uh, uh, so and I think almost our all speakers have spoken, but we have a special guest, uh, Dr. Biuti Minihong. Uh, she represents uh, the Regional Committee uh, for Asia Pacific. So, uh, you would like to say a few comments, uh, like uh, any, any else. So, we'll be happy to listen to you before we have some question answers and close it. So, so let, let, over to you for some brief comments if you want to. Make. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, um, thank you for the invitation as a guest. It, a special guest uh, of uh, international webinar. Uh, uh, I'm here uh, not uh, on behalf of MOCAP, but I'm vice chair of MOCAP. Uh, that's mean uh, the vice chair of uh, Memory of the World of uh, Asia and the Pacific. And I'm very happy to be here uh, and would like to share with you uh, some ideas from uh, Hanoi, from Vietnam. Uh, when I uh, when um, I was uh, chair of the National Mao Committee of Vietnam, and as a DG, Director General of the State Archives of Vietnam. So I think um, it's very it's very important to create the national register. And as uh, Faxon Benda uh, has mentioned later, uh, I think uh, on the basics on the basics of the national register, we we can prepare the nomination for the regional or international register. Uh, for Vietnam uh, experience, we have also on the first step. Uh, we organize a lot of seminar, conference, and workshop, and we invite uh, many, many in, uh, institution, memorial institutions to come. Uh, for example, like uh, Rachel uh, has mentioned also, that it's very important uh, to invite uh, archivists, librarian, um, uh, museum, uh, and also attention also invited the private the private uh, in, um, family for example because uh, in the guidelines of UNESCO uh, we we have uh, we have right to to encourage the private collection to pro prepare the nomination for uh, regional or international register. For example, in Vietnam, uh, Ramesh now have very well, we met uh, several times, and we have uh, three nominations from the family of the province uh, of Vietnam. Do you remember? Uh, for the 
for the character of the map between the Chinese and Vietnam. So I think it's very important uh, to invite not only the, the public sector, but also the private sector. But the national memory is, is uh, belong the regional and international, not, not distinguished. Uh, how 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 uh, belong, and also uh, for Vietnam and I think for India is also we we have the many level of uh, admin administrative re representative. That means for Vietnam we have uh, uh, sixty three uh, provinces. So also at the in the province in the in, in um, institution in the province who keep now many, many uh, potential collections. So in this uh, seminar or conference, national or regional, we encourage uh, to invite them to present uh, their uh, precious and potential collection. So uh, among the, this, uh, uh, seminar and conference, we can choose, we can decide uh, and to establish uh, the, our national register. So it's uh, one of uh, some experiences uh, from Vietnam and I'd like to share with you in this uh, step of uh, creation of the national register. And once more, thank you very much for invitation and as a special guest of this uh, international seminar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, uh, and thanks for your brief comments. And uh, it was an honor to have you within this program. So we are almost reaching uh, end of the program. Uh, there are a few questions, but uh, only thing like uh, it is almost, uh, we are near the close of the program. So uh, I will only, uh, if Rachel, uh, Somebody has a very interesting question, like how National Register can help in tourism. Uh, so uh, do you have any, any, uh, any such experiences or ideas about how National Register can help in uh, enhancing the tourism in the country? Uh, that's a really interesting one. Um, we've probably got quite a good example um, from uh, a, a collection that has just been inscribed uh, this year. So um, we uh, had a submission from um, the SS uh, Great Britain, which is a uh, ship, which is a visitor attraction, which has a library and archive attached to it. And um, so they submitted uh, about, uh, it was uh, a document about the uh, propeller screw that was um, developed by Isambard kind Kingdom Brunel, the great engineer. Um, and um, they uh, have used this. They got a lot of media attention. And that's one thing that happens when we announce what is going on the register. Um, uh, and I'm sure colleagues who have been involved in, in these programs will, will agree. Um, sometimes you get a lot of media attention and for a visitor attraction which has this these collections attached to it you use that branding of unesco we were able to um put out a, a great amount of um social media activity um we had a lovely support from our national our uk national committee uh, for unesco um who um have the resource to do that whereas we as volunteers didn't necessarily so some some of that's about coordination and um, i think there is more that can be done to support tourism and to use for um documentary heritage to do that um, in uh, other parts of my career i've been involved in ancestral tourism uh, programs in uh, looking at use of documentary heritage for uh, encouraging people to visit areas um, uh, and in one circumstance was particularly rural area of scotland and how we do that and i think that there are programs that unesco memory in the, of the world can link into that we could mutually um, 
get benefit from. I hope that helps a little bit. Thank you, Rachel. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to express my sincere thanks uh, to our uh, guest, uh, Mr. Eric Falch, uh, Director in UNESCO the Delhi Office, uh, our Honorable Culture Secretary, uh, Mr. Anand Kumar, our uh, Joint Secretary, Ms. Nidukumar Kotru, uh, Mr. Faction Bana, uh, thank you very much for your uh, full support in organizing this program and wonderful views and uh, guiding us uh, in various aspects of uh, how to go for this important staff. Uh, I'm uh, thankful to Mr. Ezekiel Dilamini for his continuous and very, very encouraging support. Uh, I'm grateful to our member secretary, Dr. Sachidana Joshi. Um, I'm, I'm grateful to Ms. Geeta Prashant. Uh, she, she has also shown her interest and support uh, because uh, our aim was to uh, make it uh, all stakeholders meet today. And, and, and I'm glad we are able to succeed in it and everybody was present and make his, make his her, her, her point in, in this journey and, 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 and I'm, I'm sure now we are moving in, in the new direction and a new landmark uh, in, in the direction of memory of the world program in India. So once again, thank you all. Thank you very much and look forward to your continued and further support in creation of national memory of the world and uh, further enhancing the program in India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. And yes.